Welcome back to the Change Physician Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Melissa Cady, joined by my co-host, Dr. Kevin Kakaro, and our guest today, Dr. Alinda Cox, who is from Austin, Texas, my own city as well, is here to join us. Thank you for joining us. Oh, that's fantastic. I'm, I'm happy to be here. I'm really looking forward to how this shift and, and things that you've been doing now, but can you start from the beginning and go with like the start of why you went into medical school or thinking about being a physician? Sure, absolutely. Um, of course, I grew up in Chicago and um, I, I really, it seems like there's not a time that I didn't really know I wanted to be a physician. Uh, matter of fact, I used to take uh, pocket knives to kindergarten and <laughs> cut up flies and all that kind of stuff, got in a lot of trouble for it. But I always thought I, I wanted to do something, um, knew I wanted to do something in the health field. And so I pursued it. Um, and uh, I trained uh, in Chicago at uh, Northwestern University Medical School and um, went to the uh, University of Louisville in Kentucky for my residency in obstetrics and gynecology. And so um, <clears throat> it, um, it was a great field for me. Uh, because um, there are, um, there's not really any other uh, medical specialty that takes care of two people at one time. And I thought that was really intriguing. And uh, I also love the fact that it was a great variety. So not only did you do obstetrics, but you also did gynecology, which is an office practice. You did surgery. And so it was just a, a mix of, of both worlds for me and was really exciting. Uh, for me to uh, to go into that specialty, and so um, came down to Austin, Texas, for uh, a, a real job. Uh, and after my residency, and I've been with Austin Regional Clinic about uh, 32 years now, and I've since dropped my OB practice. I think it's been about four or five years, and now I just do the gynecology, the office practice, and uh, the surgical uh, part of the practice. So that's kind of my story in getting down here to Texas. Yeah, so I'm curious, what were your expectations of how medicine is going to be or how we take care of the patients and what we can provide them? Like, what was your, if you can think back that far, what was your yeah, impression? I, I really, you know, I really, uh, when I was, I was younger and, uh, and uh, less experienced, um, I really felt like, you know, the sky's the limit, that uh, patients got what they needed. Um, that um, the healthcare care was going to uh, be uh, uh, a, a option for them. There was not such a thing as, oh, I can't get this or I can't get that or the insurance won't cover this or insurance won't cover that. And so um, I had kind of this uh, uh, Cinderella world of everything was going to go just perfect and just right. And certainly, um, as you know, in healthcare care now, that's not the case. And uh, we see um, disparities in healthcare everywhere. And so, um, and so that, that I think it didn't depress me or, or, or I wasn't disillusioned so much as that. I just, I just realized this was the real world and, uh, residency was kind of a fictitious area and uh, you trained, but it was not like the real world. And so, um, that's what I found. That's what I found. I got in practice that things were just not peachy king everywhere yeah so so kind of going back there then for your early practice you're coming out of residence residency and, and again it, it yeah. is a, it's a <laughs> bubble world you know residencies <laughs> are a bubble world but you're going into, into early practice and did you notice like from the get-go were you like hey something's different here in how clinical practices or did that evolve because you got a breadth of uh, a really a depth and breadth of experience going back 32 years yes it, it really evolved it's it, it it you know it seemed to really evolve for me now when i got into practice i went into practice with the austin regional clinic so it's a physician managed physician owned group and so i think for some of these things i was sheltered a little bit because it was i was not hospital owned um, I wasn't in a private practice where I had to, uh, you know, to buffet all the different uh, changes in healthcare with insurances and things like that. But eventually I realized, um, even in the Austin Regional Clinic, we have kind of a governing body that changes in healthcare uh, did affect us uh, in, in very specific ways. And, and more importantly, it affected our, our patients in very specific ways. And so I, that, that, that evolved over time as I became 
more mature, I think, in the in the practice and realized um, these changes that were happening in the healthcare system. So, so as that evolved, then did you ever reach a crux when you're like something has to change here? Like, I mean, yes. we often find that with you know physicians get to a point and we and it's the breaking or bending point where something has to change. Yes, absolutely. And what I began to see um, were that uh, was that I was responding consistently over and over again to disease processes. I was not, um, I was not uh, helping that patient, number one, protect themselves against these, pro- uh, against these problems. Um, I was uh, on the other end, always reacting to what had happened to them. Um, uh, reacting maybe to, to their poor health care or re- reacting to their poor choices uh, um, in, in food and nutrition and things of that nature. And so um, I, uh, I began to realize that many of the problems, actually many of the major problems in uh, my specialty were because of poor health, poor health choices that patients made, particularly those that were um, overweight and 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 uh, really clinically obese, I found that these people had a great deal of problems that I was seeing in the practice. And I'm handing out pills, handing out shots, handing out uh, these different things, and not really getting to the crux of the problem, which is getting them back into a healthy place in their lives in terms of, in terms of their physical. Um, in terms of their physical health. So I'm, I'm wondering, how did you respond? Obviously, there was some disparities just in education. And, and I mean, there's so many disparities, but that in and of itself was a big issue there. How did you respond to that to shift what you were providing for patients? Well, um, when I re- realized that, uh, now, now that's a to say that um, the Austin Regional Clinic does have a have a wellness program, but what I found from many patients is that um, uh, it was they had to go in, um, they had to you know have consultations, they had to be weighed in, it's a once a week kind of thing, and where they're going in, and so for some patients it was a little bit onerous. Um, uh, others did well in it, but um, many did not. And uh, not to poo-poo their system at all, but uh, and I think it's great that they had an avenue uh, for someone to be able to get back to a healthy weight and to their wellness. Um, but what I found is that people were, you know, hitting and missing on, on this kind of thing just because of their lives. They just just too busy to be able to do that uh, once a week to go in somewhere. And so um, what I realized, uh, actually, I was uh, actually on a, on a mission trip um, uh, with one of, uh, one of uh, my uh, mentors. His name is Dr. Joseph Pecoraro, and he, uh, he's a vascular surgeon in Florida, and he founded a mission uh, organization called Hearts of Fire. And so we were on a mission trip, and um, Joe used to be over 300 pounds. Uh, and one day he got off the plane and I looked at him and I thought, oh my God, you, you have lost a whole person. And he began to tell me about a, uh, a health program, a wellness program. And uh, he had lost weight, kept it off now for 14 years. I, uh, and it, it was really an excellent program because not only did it, um, did it address the weight problem by helping people with uh, their portions and, and things of that nature, but it also, which is most important, change the mindset so that uh, you began to understand we, the, the program teaches about micronutrients and macronutrients, when to eat and how to eat and portions and how stress and sleep and interact and affect uh, your health. And so we started to work on the front end of this um, and instead of adding another pill, a- adding fin- fentramine or something to help people lose weight, we began um, in this program to teach people, first of all, how to help them drop their weight, but also now how to change their mindset and their behavior so that they never have to deal with that problem again. And if and, and to learn how to manage and control their weight. So um, it was really cool. 
Um, uh, he, he worked with the program for over 14 years now. Um, and I just got on and I said, this is, this is really cool. This is really um, a comprehensive program to help people um, really change their lifestyles and help them um, uh, prevent some of the problems that I'm seeing in the office. Um, you know, in, in my profession, um, there are three, three major uh, cancer groups, breast cancer, ovarian cancer and uterine cancer. And I, I looked up just kind of in preparing for this talk, uh, this podcast, I, I, I looked up just some of the figures from the C CDC and all three of them are related to obesity, all mm -hmm. three. And um, I've seen a young woman in, in my office as young as 27 years old who was obese and had endometrial cancer. And so it's, uh, it's, it's out there uh, and this problem in our country is, is an epidemic. 34% um, of Americans are, are overweight, actually are over obese. And so, um, and I, I looked that up and it was like 78 million people mm -hmm. in America um, have this problem with obesity and it causes so many problems, not just in my field, um, but in hypertension and diabetes and, and endocrine problems. And so I think it's a, it's a, it's a number one uh, area where we really need to focus uh, our efforts in helping people get back to normal weight. So go I, ahead, Kevin. I'd like to delve into that a little bit more because you touched on a couple things is with, with, your, with your group, they had yeah. their, their regular program. And yes. um, what I've often seen with the kind of the core programs that are, that are thrown out there is, you know, they think information is going to change behavior and it becomes this, we're going to do six weeks and we're going to sit in the classroom and you're going to learn this, this, and this, and this, and this. Yeah. And then lo and behold, a couple people respond and yeah. then a whole lot of people don't. Yes. And what, what you, I find you're really talking about here and I love to, that what you mentioned was mindset in this yeah. site where you're facilitating a transformation. And that's a very different process yes. for people to go through. And, and I think from a physician standpoint, it's not something that we've learned in medical school. Exactly. So, so where did you learn this or how did you kind of experience that or what were your experiences while going through that process yourself? Well, yeah, I, w I just mentioned uh, uh, this mentor or actually the founder of this mission organization. I've been going with them for years, like eight years or nine years. And so um, when I saw him and I said, what have you done? And then he began to tell me about uh, this the program and, and um, there's an educational component to it. Um, there is a community of people that are supporting um, uh, uh, people that are, are, are endeavoring to lose weight. Um, so uh, there's, a, there's a, a coach, kind of a health coach. Um, that's kind of what I became uh, is, a, is a certified health coach um, to really help uh, people, anybody that is supported uh, will 90% of the time achieve their goal. And so um, it's, uh, and that's how I learned. As I learned, as I kind of walked with him, he actually kind of became my coach, so to speak. And I lost 20 pounds, um, found that my knees felt better. I do ballroom dancing now and, and I, I feel great and, and have uh, for myself been able to keep the weight off for four years. And so I found that personally it worked for me and certainly for him it worked. And, um, and, uh, and people just respond, they, that it's that mindset change that we have to have. Otherwise, um, uh, people will go back to the same, they'll lose weight, and then they'll go back to the same pattern of eating or overindulging if they don't change their mindset, if they don't change um, uh, their, their focus and, and, uh, and understand that you're the, about fueling your body instead of just fattening it up, you know? And so, um, and that's, that's where I learned it. That's where I, I learned how important that was and how many different factors are so important in how we manage our weight, stress, particularly sleeping. Um, people that don't get more, that get less than six to seven, six to eight hours of sleep a night, um, really have a tendency to overeat the next the next day and so sleep is so important stress is so important to to manage and so we we teach those kinds of what we call habits of health um to um to those that are that are in our program 
So I'm curious, how do you integrate that? You obviously, uh, I'm assuming the OB you don't do, maybe it's a little less call or... <laughs> or I don't do I'm done with that altogether. <laughs> <laughs> so, so how does your week look like how do you integrate this health coaching into the gynecological type practice or is it kind of separate or separate or integrated for me for me it's separate i i i i certainly um um don't want to compete in terms of in terms of my group uh, particularly um, um, they have a program that 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 works for some people and so um, the people that I see are generally people that um, that interact with me on uh, on Facebook or people that I know uh, uh, family uh, friends um, and uh, um, people as far as New Mexico and Oregon um, and um, and people see um just people transforming their lives and they're like hey you know um i i want that for my life so did did you find then that you were you were scaling back your clinical practice in order to open up this other side or are you doing both no, right now right now um i i am doing it in addition to mm -hmm. um but um the 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 person i mentioned joe pecoraro actually uh 8 years ago um, was able to close down his vascular surgery practice and he just loved helping people get healthier and uh, was able at that point after uh, eight years of being in the business was able to shut down his regular practice and um, and start doing um, this wellness program just solely full-time so um, this as we talked about this is a this is a different type of skill set this kind of facilitation rather than poking and drugging, you know, yes. um, but it's a, it's a learnable skill set. And so what I, I'd be kind of interested in hearing, cause it's not a skill set again, a lot of physicians have, right. but it's a physician that all physicians could have. Absolutely. So Absolutely. what have you found as a physician? What are the strengths of a physician to of being able to learn and apply this coaching, uh, coaching model and style? Well, I think number one, first of all, our patients, your patients love you. Um, and, um, and they are, they intuitively believe and, and, and of course should believe that you are um, speaking into their lives um, what's going to help them. And so I think number one, physicians really ought to know and, and I think truly should have a sense that your your patients hang on every word um, that you say, and they truly believe that what you say is going to make them better. And so, it, you you re you don't tend to have to worry about um, trustworthiness, I, I guess, so to speak. And so, very uh, it's very easy then um, to and you and you have your hands on the patient. You you know you're interacting with them. Um, They've seen you more than one time. You know, you're 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 hearing about their lives. You're talking to them about their blood pressure. You're talking to them about, uh, in my case, <clears throat> you know, abnormal bleeding or or some some kind of some kind of problem. And so, and so it's very easy um, to strike up a conversation. So that, you know, and say, hey, you know, you know, I'm, it looks like I'm going to have to maybe, you know, add some blood pressure medicine. But I think that. Um, if we can get you to lose some weight, then we may be able to avoid that. Um, I can't tell you how many people I've seen in my office that have two, three blood pressure medicines, um, pumps and, and, and pills for their diabetes. And, and I'll ask them, I said, well, what are you doing to lose weight? Oh, I know. Um, you know, I try to do this. I try to, I try to watch my portions, um, and they don't have a structured way to do it. Um, and when you have a structured way, and someone that's helping you um, to and encouraging you, uh, hey, you can do this. Uh, people, people will get on board. They don't want to be 350 pounds. You know, they don't want to be that way. They don't want to be sick. They don't want to have hypertension or diabetes, but they need a very specific way and a very structured way to be able to um, to walk through that 
every day and know that um, what they're doing is reproducible and what they're doing is going to get them the, um, the um, success that they want. And so, and so I, I think for, for all of our physician offices, I, I can't tell you, if I, see, if I see 32 people a day, I promise you, um, gosh, 20, 20 will at least be overweight and probably 10 of them will be obese, at least. And so, um, uh, and so it's, it's a real, a real um, epidemic as the CDC calls it. It's a real epidemic and it's one that, uh, look at the people that are, are the worst uh, performers or the worst, um, um, uh, the people that have the, the most risk uh, with even this coronavirus. Who are they? They're the people that have chronic lung problems. They're people that are obese. People that have diabetes. People that have hypertension, and um, and so if you look at those last two, hypertension and diabetes, um, what their their risk is obesity. So you have chronic lung problems, obesity, 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 and so um, these these problems uh, it affects every area of their lives. And um, and so it's 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 something we we really as Americans and, and physicians really have to get after. Um, we really have to um, we really have to modify how we do things and stop reacting um, to the disease process, but really start working on the other side, help that person better their better their um, their health. Yeah, I think there's such a um, you know dealing with sometimes a stigma uh, that people feel um, if someone was to bring up the issue, especially a physician. I mean, I'm assuming most of the people that want to be coached by you have already, uh, they're already in, in a place where they're motivated or at least interested in that, that process and yeah. are reaching out. But any, any comments on just stigma and, and approaching people about this? Um, what, I, uh, what I do, I, um, uh, sometimes people will come in and say, um, I'll, I'll say, you know, let's look at your, well, your blood pressure is doing pretty good. I said, hey, you know, uh, at the end of the of the encounter, I'll say, you know, everything is okay. Your blood pressure is doing okay, but I'm a little bit concerned about your weight. Mm -hmm. And uh, many patients are concerned about their weight as well. But it's it's like the elephant in the room. Nobody wants to say anything about it. And um, and they want to, don't want to bring it up because if you talk to them, many of them have tried so many different things. And so now they're just frustrated. They don't want to talk about it. If it's just going to be this way, it's just going to be this way. And they really need the hope to know that, hey, uh, you haven't tried everything, you know? And, um, and, so, um, and so I find that uh, very gently, it's, 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 a very, it's, it's an easier topic than, um, than we think. And certainly, I believe that as physicians, I, you know, if somebody storms out of my office, um, at least as a physician, I have to tell them, <clears throat> hey, your weight is not good. Um, it's, it, it, we need to do something and give them a structured way to do something to control it. As if, even if, if I were to say, hey, your blood pressure 180 over 120, okay, we need to do something. Well, the same thing we have to uh, approach that as a major health issue. Your weight is a major health issue. Mm -hmm. And we can't, we can't, we have to be able to address it. Well, and, and I liked how you phrased that though. Because a, a lot of these kind of bridging terms and, and the way that we frame a conversation is not something, again, that we were necessarily taught as physicians. And, and it can be quite challenging uh, when it comes to obesity to, to talk about it. And typically people will say is, are you aware that you have a weight problem? Or uh, do you want to lose weight? I mean, and they're almost accusatory in a lot of ways. And, they're, and, they're, and they can generate, and it's rather than sort of eliciting a smooth conversation or a caring conversation, they generate conflict instead. Yes. So with this term that you do, where you're like, you know, kind of framed it up front, what's going well, and then you just kind of throw out there like a little seed, you know, yeah. I'm, a, yeah. I'm a little concerned about your weight. And then with that pause, what you're doing is you're allowing them to respond and it's coming from a place, mm -hmm. you're verbalizing that you care, you're yeah. doing it in a non-confrontational manner, 
and and you're letting them to respond how they want to respond, which I, I just, it's just a short little phrase, but I think that's a beautiful phrase. Yeah, absolutely. And people really respond. They're like, and I can't say everyone has to say, yeah, I know. I, I know. I, I said, well, hey, you know, let's do something. You know, um, this is this is what we can do. And uh, and people are are they are very um, uh, very uh, endearing and embrace embrace doing something um, about about what their their weight is. I, I've had people that I've had people that I've talked to say, I, I don't feel good about myself. Not just now from a physical standpoint, but now we're talking emotionally. Um, I don't feel good about myself. I, I, I don't like to take pictures. Um, I don't want. I don't want to be in front of anyone. It's almost a shame. They have a shame about um, how they look and and the fact that they can't seem to do anything to get weight off. And uh, and so they they retreat into this this place where, um, well, I'm just going to be like, I'm just going to be. And, uh, uh, and I think we as physicians, uh, have to always, uh, bring that hope. Um, and, um, and Hey, we're, we're just going to work until we get this, till we get it right. You know, like we do with any other disease process. And instead of adding necessarily three, four diabetic meds in terms of we're going to get this right or get your blood sugars down, <clears throat> we're going to go back to say, hey, I don't want to add another diabetic med to you. But I believe that if we can get your way down 20 pounds or 30 pounds, you're not going to have to add any more medication and I may be able to decrease some of the medications that you're on now mm -hmm. and just that hope that that sparkle of man I could I could maybe reduce my medical <laughs> my medical prescription bill hey let's do it you know and uh, and I think if we if we we do it as in terms of if we're partnering with them to help them do this instead of you go do um uh, then I think they really receive it a lot better uh, and really are encouraged to do something about it. Yeah. I'm curious, what is, uh, if, if you feel free to share it, if you're comfortable with it, what's the actual coaching program that you did to get certified? Well, the, the actual coaching program, it has different facets. It's different. Uh, so, so that um, depending upon what a person needs, um, uh, it'll have, uh, there's different programs within it to to place them in, and so what we really do is um, we do a health assessment. Uh, it's just over the phone, free consultation, and just assess their health and uh, see where they want to go, um, uh, what their goals are for their health, and then depending upon what they want and the different. Um, um, the different facets of their of their medical problems, then we are able to put them into a program um, that is going to work for them. But the the training program that you actually received to become certified as a health coach, yes, is, is, there, it, uh, is, is part that? of that program. Yes, yeah, is part of the program. Um, okay. that we do. Is is it something you can share just for if someone wanted to become a health coach, or is it something that's best to keep under wraps? not not so much in terms that it's it's everywhere okay it's it's not a you know it's not oh, a I got you. but what we find happens is that is that um we really want to talk to that person or talk to that coach um and what we found happened we used to say the the name of the the wellness program all the time mm -hmm. but what people would do is they'll go to the website They'll order a bunch of food. Uh -huh. They don't get the evaluation. Hey, you didn't need what you ordered. <laughs> uh, uh, they, they, and they, and they do it all without, um, without getting a, a coach. That's the mo one of the most important things is getting their, their, their coach. Uh, we, we tailor their, their, um, their, their meal plans and nutrition for them. Um, and they, they don't get involved in the community um, there, I, I, I put things on Facebook and there's 
you know, there may be 50 people that'll get on and say, man, way to go. You lost, you lost 10 pounds. That's fantastic. And so they get that positive reinforcement every time. And then, um, and then they, they oftentimes will not get the educational materials that they need. Um, the habits of health book and the life book. Um, and so, so yes, yeah, I, I, I tend well not. Said. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, that makes sense because you're yeah. in, a, in a lot of situations is you're trying to frame frame that that journey for them like as a good mentor or guide is to make sure that people are yeah. taking the right steps and sometimes the best way to do that is just to make sure that you can help them choose that right step exactly than push them out the door but I, i'm curious from a physician standpoint we you know we've talked about the power of coaching a little bit we've talked about yeah. how you got involved in it if there's a physician out here who's perhaps interested in health coaching Oh man. Where, yeah. where, you know, what's a resource that you would recommend for them to start as, as maybe just an introduction to say, Hey, if you're interested in this, here's a place to go. You can learn more. I would just give them my cell phone number. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> honestly, honestly, I would just give them my cell phone number because, um, it's a ripple effect as, as more physicians, um, get involved with this. It's a ripple effect. You know, I may have 20 people, well, with you, with, you know, with your 20 or your 50 or whatever, we can be really begin to make an impact. And then those, 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 those patients can begin to make an impact because people will say, wow, what are you doing? And they say, well, you know, my, my doc has me on a wellness program. And they'll say, well, I want to, I want to do it too. I need to lose 50 pounds. Mm -hmm. And so it becomes this, this grassroots kind of uh, initiative uh, and friends are helping friends and families helping family uh, get healthy. And so, yeah, you have, I'll give you my cell phone number. Uh, just call me and, uh, and, and I'll tell you about the program, even people that want to, to be involved with it um, from a standpoint of being, being a patient or being a client is absolutely uh, just call and, and more than happy to get people started. Okay. Maybe we'll add uh, at least maybe an email to the show notes. And if they want the phone number, they can ask for it. That sounds, that good. sounds good. And uh, do most people just, they find you on your Facebook page. Do you lead them to yeah. that or is. Yeah. Uh, Linda Cox, you can message me. You can find me on my Facebook page. Uh, they can just put a little note in there. Hey, I'm interested in, in your wellness program. I'll get right back to them and then we'll go through it and systematically make sure if it's a coach, tell them how it's, how it's done, make sure that they're successful um, and, and, and do the training in that way. And then if it's a client, Hey, I want to lose a hundred pounds. Okay. Let's put you in this program and, uh, and help them help them lose. And they have the support and the resources to do that because the most important thing is changing the mindset. Changing the mindset is the most important. Yeah. So Alinda, where I, I, I want to be very appreciative of your time. I don't want to take too much of it, but what okay. I would be kind of curious is Alinda today, and you're talking to Alinda of years ago, you know, knowing what I know now, what would yeah. I tell myself? Um, because there's going to be a lot of physicians that are probably at that place where, where they're re recognizing that, you know, we go into practice, we want to help people get better. And then we start getting into this, this, yes. you know, this hamster wheel of, of prescriptions and reactive care model. Yes. So if you, if you were, again, looking at your, your old self as a Linda, yes. what piece of advice would you want to tell her uh, that may maybe supercharged or start this process off and you know, a little bit quicker, faster or better or, or anything else? Yes. I, I would tell a Linda of old that um, don't be afraid to um, get involved with a person's life. Um, uh, because uh, the Linda Vol was just, hey, you know, uh, okay, let's do this or this or this. In the back of my mind, I'm thinking, okay, she needs to lose 100 pounds. That's what's causing all this problem. But not not be the person that says, hey, you know, um, you know, how are you doing? I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about your weight. Um, is, is there is there some way we can help with this? Um, and and, uh, and so becoming more involved, don't be afraid of becoming involved um, in, a, in a person's life, in their, in their lifestyle. Uh, it doesn't commit you to, you know, 
going to their birthday parties or, you know, you know what I mean? You, you know, you, you're not, <laughs> you know, you don't become their, their, their best friend, their BFF, but, um, but people love that you are concerned about me more than just my blood pressure and it's time for my annual exam and I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. And uh, because, and, and I think, I think people, if, if you don't address it, I think people can kind of think, you know, they didn't say anything about how, how much overweight I was. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, and so uh, I think, uh, I think Alinda Vole would have been, I wouldn't, I won't say, yeah, say the term aggressive, but I would say the term uh, um, more inquisitive uh, about, uh, their health and, and, uh, and being more, um, more compassionate in terms of, of asking them, um, how can we, how can we fix this? Uh, what can we do? I know that there's something that, that we can do here and let's, let's get involved with that and get you where you're not having this problem. Yeah. And one thing I, I mentioned, and I, and, I, and I forgot to mention in terms of all the different, I mentioned about the different cancers and things like that, but also infertility. Mm. Infertility in, in, in young women is a, is, a, is a big problem and a growing problem. And many uh, problems are because um, of their overweightness. And mm. that just messes up their whole uh, endocrine cycle. So um, doing that is, is so important. Uh, so important. Um, before uh, Kevin closes us out, I just want to ask or make a comment that I think maybe a lot of physicians don't uh, realize, and you can attest to this, but coaching versus being someone's physician, you can do across state lines because it's not medical. Is that how you're? That's right. It's, that's right. You, there is, there, you, are, you are helping your patient or, or your family or whoever create health for themselves. Um, uh, and, and so you're, you're not prescribing any medications. Um, there's no third party payer. Um, uh, there is, so you, you, you're, you're helping, you're helping people with great training. Uh, you're helping them with a, a community that, that helps them and supports them. Um, there are, there are different, uh, uh, foods that you help them or feelings that you help them um, uh, know and enjoy they get they get educational training and so uh, so yes it 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 doesn't involve your license or going over state lines or anything like that awesome and the and the company uh, really really loves that that people are um, are are trying to help people, and so um, and so they um, they do they do help in that in that way. So many physicians are not are not compensated for doing anything in terms of helping their patients lose weight, and and many in many insurance companies now don't even don't even list that. I mean, you can't patient can't you can't authorize somebody because they have a BMI of forty. To have any kind of supplementation and so uh, and so that's one thing that we've also kind of conquered the wellness program so so resources basically is what you're saying for physicians that are outside of traditional healthcare practices because traditional reinsurance won't reimburse for them so in this you know you're going back to a more of a of a a direct physician patient interaction again without the third party. So you can now, or in the company that you're working with, provide resources, yes. uh, which we don't see. Yes. Uh, which is exactly. both great and very sad that <laughs> we won't, won't invest in this stuff. I know. But, uh, it's, just, it's incredible. You know, CDC absolutely says it's an epidemic and um, we can't get insurance coverage to help. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Cox, for joining us today. Really, really enjoyed your, your hearing your, your change physician journey um, in involving coaching and how you kind of yes. developed and, and revitalized your practice with that. Um, again, for everybody else out there, if, if you're interested in helping people get better, coaching is a, is a great way to do it. I think as physicians, we sometimes think that it is sometimes, it's a skill set that we can't have, but it's definitely learnable. Yes. And I loved how you were basically saying it's something that we should be able to do quite easily or not, right. as, you know, I shouldn't say easily, but it's something that we, sh we as physicians have the capabilities to do. Yes, so. absolutely. 
All right. Well, thank you all, everybody out there. Thanks for joining us today on the Change Physician Podcast. Remember to find all our resources as well as links at thechangephysician.com. And until next time, stay well. All right. Thank you.